Good morning. I want to welcome you to our worship this morning, the second Sunday after Pentecost, as well as the commemoration of the Emmanuel Nine. Uh, I'm Pastor Karen Toos, pastor here at Prince of Peace Lutheran Church in Freeport, Illinois, and I welcome all of you members and friends and guests alike. Glad to have you worshiping our God with us this morning. Um, just a couple of announcements before we begin our service. This Wednesday, the 17th of June, is the fifth anniversary of the killing of the Emanuel Nine in South Carolina. And I will be having a um, 20 minute, approximately, prayer service over Zoom at 8 o'clock p.m. on Wednesday. If you would like to be part of that, please send me an email or um, a text or a phone call, whatever, so that I include you on the list to receive the invitation so that you can join that prayer service. Uh, that, that was uh, having prayer services and other observances of the Emanuel Nine shootings was a decision uh, recommended by our Synod, the North, uh, Northwest, no, I'm sorry, the Northern Illinois Synod. And it was a memorial to the churchwide assembly, which was um, received and approved at the churchwide assembly this past August. So it's being observed in a variety of ways over the next couple of weeks in churches across the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America and quite possibly in other denominations as well. Also want to lift up the need for people to help out with the lawn mowing here at the church. If you're able to help out with that, please call Stephanie in the church office and sign up for a date. And um, we have a number of things going on in the church by Zoom this week. If you would like to be part of any of them and have not been receiving Zoom invitations, please let me know and I'll add you to the lists. And as we look to the confession and forgiveness in today's worship service, we will be saying some words that for many of us, myself included, are uncomfortable words. But I believe that it is important for us to contemplate and confess our sins that are related to racism. And, and so that is a part of our confession today. I encourage you to give some careful thought to these words and these ongoing concerns and sins in our society. With that, we begin our worship with the order for confession and forgiveness. Gracious God, we thank you for making one human family of all the peoples of the earth and for creating all the wonderful diversity of cultures. Enrich our lives by ever-widening circles of fellowship and show us your presence in those who differ most from us. From the bondage of racism that denies the humanity of every human being and the prejudices within us that deny the dignity of those who are oppressed, Lord, set us free. Lord, have mercy. From racism that blinds oppressors to the destruction caused by the spirit and practice of racial injustice, Christ, set us free. Christ, have mercy. From the racism that will not recognize the work of your spirit in other cultures, Lord, set us free. Lord, have mercy. Forgive those of us who have been silent and apathetic in the face of racial intolerance and bigotry, both overt and subtle, public and private and take away the arrogance and hatred that infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us and help us to find that unity that is the fruit of righteousness and will enable us to become your beloved community. Empower us to speak boldly for justice and truth and help us to deal with one another without hatred or bitterness working together with mutual forbearance and respect, and work through our struggles and confusion to accomplish your purposes. O God of unconditional love, you who show no partiality in respect to people or nations, we have heard your good news of great joy to all the people. 
We have heard that good news and in hearing believe. We know that your sanctuary is a house of worship for all people with no regard for the color of our skin. As we worship you, knit us into a people, a seamless garment of many colors. May we celebrate our unity, made whole in diversity. Forgive us for our inability to let our old selves die to the world. We acknowledge that we participate in structures that, that are inherently racist, and yet we do so we, we so often do nothing to remedy it. Show us we fail when we judge others according to the color of their flesh. God, who is rich in mercy, loves us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. We join together in singing our opening hymn, Gather Us In.
of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We sing our hymn of praise. Serve the Lord with gladness. 
Come into God's presence with a song. Know that the Lord is God, our maker to whom we belong. We are God's people and the sheep of God's pasture. Enter the gates of the Lord with thanksgiving and the courts with praise. Give thanks and bless God's holy name. Good indeed is the Lord, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from age to age. And a reading from the fifth chapter of Romans. St. Paul has written, Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
So good morning. This morning I brought a couple things with me. A baseball bat and a glove. I bet some of you folks have these in your homes. When my kids were little, we didn't have, well, we had a baseball bat and we had a glove, but um, much more likely that my kids would be out with the soccer ball or the basketball, things like that. But so if you don't have a baseball bat and a glove, think about some ball you have or some sports equipment. You know, if you just keep it in your bedroom, it doesn't do much good, does it? You gotta take it out and play with it. So, if you got a baseball bat and a glove, you probably want to get out, and you probably have to have a ball too, but get out and play catch. Uh, maybe go out to a playground and have somebody throw the ball and you practice batting. You want to get out and use it. And the best is when you can join a team, right? And have practices and then go out and play a game. That's the best, isn't it? So, that's kind of what Jesus was getting at in today's gospel lesson, when he sent his disciples out to the towns and villages. You know, having faith in us is good. It's really important. But if we just keep it to ourselves, it isn't doing everything it's supposed to do. If we have the love of God in us, but we don't share it, it's kind of like a baseball bat and a glove. but never use them. So, God gives us all of God's blessings, faith and love and care and grace and mercy and so much more. God gives them to us so that we go out and use them and share them with others. Today in the gospel lesson, Jesus sent his disciples out to the surrounding towns and villages and he said, go, cure the sick, cast out demons, raise the dead, share the love of God. You know, that message isn't just for those 12 way back then. It's for us, too. Take those gifts we've been given by God and go out and share them and use them because this faith we have is not meant to keep to ourselves. It's meant to share so that everybody can know God's love. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for calling us to be your people, making us yours in baptism, and thank you for giving us the words of this gospel lesson that remind us that we aren't to keep this faith and this love of God all to ourselves, but it's ours to go out and share. Empower us, God, and give us opportunities so that we can share these gifts with others that you have given to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks, you guys. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Have you heard the song, You Raise Me Up, sung by Josh Groban? Due to copyright restrictions, I can't play it for you. But here are the words, some of the words. When I am down, and oh, my soul so weary, when troubles come and my heart burdened be, then I am still and wait here in the silence until you come and sit a while with me. You raise me up so I can stand on mountains. You raise me up to walk on stormy seas. I am strong when I am on your shoulders. You raise me up to more than I can be. Well, that song has been stuck on repeat mode in my brain over the last several days. And I'm guessing that many of us can relate to this songwriter who is down and feeling the weariness of his or her soul. It's likely that many of us are feeling down and weary and our hearts are burdened in these days. We too wait in silence 
for God's purpose to be known and felt in the midst of our struggles, everything that's going on in these days. This song reminds us that our God raises people up to be more than we are. Think of someone whom God has raised up to be more, more than their circumstances, more than their troubles or their problems, more than who they are as God opens up new opportunities or calls to new ministries. If we were all here in the pews in church today, I would have put sticky notes on the cover of each and every bulletin, and I would have asked you to take out a pencil or a pen and write a person's name on it that has been raised up to be more than they are. And then during the offering, I'd ask you to bring that sticky note forward and put it on a piece of poster board up front. And then we'd have a collection of people whom God has raised up to be more than they are. So if you have a piece of paper handy, a pencil or a pen, write down that person's name that you would have written down if you had a sticky note here in church. Maybe it's you. Or maybe it's a friend or a relative. Or maybe you're thinking of somebody in the Bible whom God raised up to be more than they were. Like the paralyzed man whose friends carried him on a pallet to Jesus. They wanted to get him to Jesus so that Jesus could heal him. But there were so many people so tightly packed around the house where Jesus was that they couldn't get their friend in the door. So they took him up on the roof, pulled off some of the roof tiles, and lowered him down to Jesus. And Jesus reached out his hand and raised him up so that he could walk. And then there's the centurion's daughter who had died. Jesus went to her home. He went into her bedroom. And he spoke to her the words, Talitha kum, little girl, get up. And then he took her hand, and she stood up, raised to new life. Then there were the ten lepers that Jesus encountered on the road. Because of their disease, highly contagious skin disease, they were banished from their families and their community. Can you imagine how down and weary they must have felt every single day? Because they couldn't see their families, and there was no end to their separation. With Jesus' word, his instruction to go and show themselves to the priest, he raised them up from their lives of leprosy so that they could return home again and live rich, full lives in community. And then there was the Samaritan woman whom Jesus met and talked to at the well. She was looked down on by her community, treated as an outcast. And Jesus raised her out of that, told her of God's love for her, showed her his own compassion, and gave her a new sense of her worth. So she went to her village and invited everyone to come and meet Jesus. The list of people whom Jesus raised to a new life, a life of faith, a life of grace and compassion and service, a life of blessings, that list goes on and on and on. And in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus talked about raising all of us beyond our present circumstances, beyond what we can be on our own. Today's Gospel lesson tells the story of Jesus' disciples as Jesus raised them up to more than they were, more than they were even as Jesus' disciples. James and John, Peter and Andrew were fishermen. They were skilled with their boats and their fishing nets, and Jesus called them from that life to follow him and be part of his ministry for the sake of the work of God's kingdom, for the healing and the wholeness of God's people, for the work 
the blessing of sharing God's love. Matthew was a tax collector in a time when tax collectors were despised, hated as traitors because they worked for the occupying government, Rome. Nathaniel was hanging out under a fig tree. All of them, all 12 of them, were raised up to do God's work. And then when Jesus sent the disciples out to the surrounding towns and villages, he raised them up again as he gave them the call, the responsibility to go and share the love of God with others. He sent them to raise up others to be more than they were through healing and teaching and casting out demons and loving and valuing each of God's people. Jesus gave his disciples authority over unclean spirits, and he gave them the authority, the ability to be able to heal all sicknesses and diseases. I can only imagine how many people Jesus' disciples raised up as they went to those towns and villages. God continues to raise us up and to send us out to raise others up through the power and the authority of the gospel. The gospel raises us up from sin and death and the power of the devil. The power of God's love and grace raises us up and strengthens us and equips us for the situations we face and the ministries that we are called to do in Jesus' name. These are challenging times that we live in. I found myself raised up and empowered by God's grace in these times of the pandemic, in the midst of the reality that I just don't know how to do this ministry during a time of pandemic. They didn't teach us that in seminary. But God keeps on showing me the way and gifting me with people who help and show me the way and are partners with me enabling our ministry here at Prince of Peace to continue to be vibrant and strong. I would never have thought that I would be doing all of the online ministries that are now just the way things have to be. And as I look to the future and to restarting in-person worship and other ministries, I trust that God will raise us all up to do and to be what is needed so that we can worship and we can keep ourselves and each other as safe as possible when the CDC and the state guidelines say that we are ready to gather again. The same, I believe, is true regarding race relations in our country, in our state, in our community. God raises us up, us, the Church of Jesus Christ, God raises us up to ascend the mountains of racism, to walk on the stormy seas of the turmoil of our time, and to be God's agents of the new life and the new hope, the new reality of justice and equality that God desires for this world and for the people whom God has created and redeemed. Troubles have come, and troubles have been with us a long, long time. But now they've come once again to the forefront. Many people, especially our black and brown brothers and sisters, they're weary. Their hearts are burdened. And our hearts are burdened as we see videos and as we hear stories of the injustices that are suffered by others because of the color of their skin. Today, we do remember the Emmanuel Nine, who were killed five years ago on June 17th. They were killed in their church, in the midst of a Bible study and prayer meeting. They were killed, they were targeted, because of the color of their skin. Before them, and since then, many people have been killed, harassed, oppressed, discriminated against, because of the color of their skin. As we hear today's gospel lesson, the story of Jesus sending the twelve out, may this 
story be a reminder to us that we too are sent out. We are raised up for God's work in the world. And may we contemplate how and where Jesus is sending us out to our neighborhood, to our community, to our world, to be a force for raising ourselves and raising our neighbors and raising our world up above where we are to the life that God dreams of us, dreams of for us and for our world. Because that's what our God does. God raises us, raises us up so that we can go and be God's instruments in raising up others, so that we can see again and again God's kingdom breaking into our world. You raise me up so I can stand on mountains. You raise me up to walk on stormy seas. I am strong when I am on your shoulders. You raise me up to more than I can be. Indeed, thanks be to God who raises us up so that we can be more than we are. Amen.
gathered into unity with one another and the whole creation. Let us pray for our shared world. Holy God, you bring us together and call us your own. Bless theologians, teachers, and preachers who help us grow in faith following Jesus Christ. Guide your church that we might be a holy people, committed to love and service to others. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Creator God, the whole earth is yours. Where there is fire, bring cool air and new growth. Where there is flooding, bring abatement. Where there is drought, bring rain. Inspire us to care for what you have provided so that with care can come abundance. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of all, we have created divisions you will not own. In places of conflict, raise up leaders who work to develop lasting peace and reconciliation. Lift up leaders to lead our nation forward in unity, justice, and peace. Encourage organizations and individuals who care for refugees and for all who are forced to leave their homes. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy God, you care for those who are harassed and helpless. Protect and defend those who are abused and oppressed. Heal those who are sick. Provide abundance so that all can be fed. Empower all those whose voices go unheard and help us respond to the pressing needs of our neighbors. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Healing God, you accompany us in sickness and suffering, bring relief to all afflicted with the coronavirus and all those isolated now more than ever, especially those in prison, care facilities, and hospitals. Strengthen caregivers, health workers, and all those whose work ensures the safety and the well-being of others. Console, heal, and nourish all in need this day, especially those on our prayer list. We pray for Lynn, Jean, Becky, Mary Ellen, Bob, Libby, Stuart, Karen, Jay, Izzy, Rick, Carrie, Sarah, and Dawn, and those whom we name now. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Help us to see your hand in our lives, continuing to, bless, continuing to bless us each and every day. We give you thanks for these blessings. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of blessing and bountiful life, you provide a plentiful harvest of gifts and resources. Prepare us to labor and gather the fruits of this congregation that we might discover new ways of living. Minister to us in our work so that we do not lose heart. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of connection, you call us to make your presence known. Accompany people of faith as they nurture relationships in new ways. Where the sin of racism fractures our relationships, bring repentance and reconciliation. Free us for the difficult work ahead in our congregations and communities. Open our hearts for attentive listening so that our places of connection are filled with your spirit. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Emmanuel, God with us. You embrace in love those who cry out to you. Lift up all whom racism and hatred have cast down. Strengthen those who need courage to speak and act against oppression. Sustain those who are weary from their struggles. Comfort all who grieve, love, grieve loved ones. Restore hope where it has been lost, so that all may trust your love that reaches to the depths of pain and suffering. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. 
We give you thanks, holy God, for the faithful life and witness of Clementa, Cynthia, Daniel, DePayne, Ethel, Myra, Sharonda, Susie, and Twanza, the Emmanuel Nine. May their faith and witness to your forgiving love in Jesus Christ inspire all people to pursue paths of justice, courage, and self-giving love. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We also lift up the continued need for an end to violence against those of other races. And we remember also Ahmed Arbery, Michael Brown, Philando Castile, Terence Kuchin, Eric Garner, Freddie Gray, Batham Jean, Tatiana Jefferson, Trayvon Martin, Laquan McDonald, Tamir, Tamir Rice, Brianna Taylor, George Floyd. Lord, may their witness continue to lead us forward in addressing the sins of racism. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. We come to you also today in prayer for the Taylor family and all who grieve the death of Eunice's sister, Angela. We ask you, holy God, to comfort them and surround them with your love and your peace in this time of grief. We ask you to fill them with the hope of the promise of the resurrection to eternal life in Christ Jesus. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Holy God, you bring all people to yourself. We give thanks for the faithful who have gone before us. Sustain us in your mission until the day you bear us up to join the saints in light. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O God, and our prayers that are too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share the peace of God with those in your, our household. Carol, please be with you. And at this time, we acknowledge and give thanks for the offerings that I received here at Prince of Peace. The offerings that you continue to provide, continue to support the ministry of Prince of Peace in this time when we cannot gather and worship. While we certainly understand those who do not have the means right now through loss or loss of work or reduction of work, um, we do appreciate those who are able to continue to make offerings to support God's work in this place. Thank you. We sing the offertory canticle, we give thee but thy own. Nourish us through these gifts, 
that we might proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and in the world, through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now receive the benediction. Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you now and forever. Amen. As today is also Flag Day, we conclude our worship by singing a patriotic hymn, O Beautiful for Spacious Skies. Jesus' witnesses. Thanks be to God.